God bless the choir. Shall we please rise up on our feet? Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voices and begin to appreciate God. Begin to worship him. Begin to bless him. Begin to exalt him. Begin to lift up his name. Magnify the God that is able to do what man cannot do. Exalt the God that can do all things. Give him glory, give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration. Appreciate him, recognize him. Bless his holy name. Our God can do all things. There is nothing that he cannot do. Father, we bless your name, we worship your name, we adore your name. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be magnified, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for making us be partakers of these divine promises and gifts and blessings. Thank you for making us to be your children. Thank you for being our father. Father, be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, as we go into this ministration, Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, let's be seated for a while. And we are going to be praying this morning. And that is why I'm probably not going to be using a slide because I want us to pray. God has put this burden in my heart that we should just go into session of prayers this morning. And um, as we'll be praying, I'll be bringing whatever message that I want to give from God will be in the prayers. And I believe that the Almighty God will hear all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to appreciate our daddy that has given every one of us this opportunity to share this platform. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the theme for the month has been, my God is able to do all things. Ephesians 3.20. By now, I know you know what is there by heart. And it is that our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we think or say according to the power that is working in us. And that power that is working in us is the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are also been in the season of his resurrection. And um, I believe that the resurrection power is already flowing in our midst. God has used many of our daddies and mommies to give the word of God, and they have been talking about this resurrection power. And I'll quickly just like to say one or two things. In 1 Corinthians 15, 4, 1 Corinthians 15, 4, the Bible recorded that Jesus Christ was buried, and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Many prophets prophesied about the death the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ himself also prophesied and spoke about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. In Mark 8.31 and Matthew 17.22-23, Mark 8.31, Matthew 17.22-23, Jesus Christ spoke expressly about the fact that he was going to be killed, he was going to be buried, and that he was going to resurrect on the third day. So the third day is actually the number of resurrection. And I want to believe that that is the cardinal power behind the church. Because as far as humans are concerned, death is a finality in the physical realm. It's the end of everything. And the almighty God looked at that particular thing that will change the mind of everybody and that has to do with the reversal of death turning death to life and that was why Jesus Christ actually resurrected before the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ no one and even after his death, burial and resurrection it has not 
been duplicated. Apart from those that were raised up in the scriptures by the word of God or that just Christ himself raised up. And God can do what man cannot do. Can do all things. In Matthew 19, 26, the Bible says, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I'm trying to just lay a foundation before we begin to pray. In Mark 10, 27, it is repeated, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. In Luke 1, 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Now, I haven't laid those premises that resurrection is the opposite of death in the physical realm, in the realm of man. Death is like the end of everything. But in the realm of God, in the realm of the spirit, there can be a reversal of death. And I want to prophesy that in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever might have been killed by the enemies in our lives, anything good, anything glorious, all the promises that might have been compromised and destroyed by the enemies, there will be a reversal today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall we rise up on our feet and we are going to begin to pray. And you're going to pray, you're going to sit down, you're going to pray. I was looking at the name of Lazarus in John chapter 11 from verse 1 to verse 43 when Joshua said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus actually means God has helped. God has helped. In another place, it was God helped. He's talking about the help of God. And God specifically chose Lazarus with that name to demonstrate the power of his resurrection. Isaiah 41.10, God said, I will help you. We all need the help of God. We're going to lift up our voices to go to pray and say, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, send your help to me now. Let's go ahead and begin to pray. Send your help to Jesus' house for all nations. Send your help to my family. Send your help to your church. Send your help to me now. Because you can do all things. Send your help to me. Help me, O oh Lord. Help your church, O oh Lord. Help families. Help marriages. Help projects. Help finances. We receive your help now. We receive your help right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please be seated. And we're going to be praying three prayer points. We're going to pray one seated, and we're going to stand up to, pay, to, to pray the next two again. Now, in Matthew 19, 26, it is written, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now, because God can do all things, what that place is actually saying is this, and we're going to use it to pray. It is saying what men are looking to do, and they have concluded that it is impossible. That's the meaning of what is happening there. With men, this is impossible. This shows that something is going on, an activity is going on, and that activity is impossible with men. As a matter of fact, men have concluded that it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Lift up your voice to pray. There must be something in your life right now that there is a finality to it. There is a conclusion to it. You have concluded you, are, you may not have discussed with anybody, but right within you, you have said, this may not be possible. But the word of God is telling you right now that it is in your realm. In the realm of God, it is possible. So pray and say, Father, 
whatever I might have concluded, that it is impossible in my own life. Let there be a reversal now and make it possible. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to search your heart. Begin to pray. Begin to commit that issue into the hands of God. What you have concluded and you are saying, this is impossible. God says it is possible. So begin to pray and say, Father, let there be a reversal. Let there be a reversal. Make impossibility possible in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mark 10, 27. They look similar, but they are addressing different issues. With men, it is impossible. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Now, the meaning of that is that men are trying to do what only God can do. They are actually at it. But they can't do it because it is not given to man to be able to do. It is only God that can do it. That's the meaning of Mark 10, 27. They are already at it. And they think they can do it. But it is only God that can do it. There are so many things that man cannot do that are in the realm of God. What is that particular thing that you are struggling with and you have not handed over to God? You are struggling with it because right within you, you think you have the capacity and the ability to do it. But what of God is saying specifically here that man cannot do it. It is only God that can do it. So there must be a shift there must be um, a change of focus that this thing that I've been struggling with, I can't do it. God can do it. Lift up your voice to pray. And I will encourage you to stand up to pray now. And say, Father, whatever my family has been struggling with for a long time, we hand it over to you now. We shift our focus. We redirect our attention. Father, do it for us. We cannot do it. Father, do it for us. As touching that family, as touching that child, as touching that husband, as touching that wife, as touching that project, Father, do it for us. We cannot do it. We hand it over to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before you sit down, you're going to pray another one. Luke 1, 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, the meaning of this is, God cannot be stopped from accomplishing what he wants to accomplish. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You cannot stop God from doing what he wants to do. That song says, what he will do, he will do. What he will say, he will do. You're going to lift up your voice to pray and say, Father, all your precious promises for my life, all your prophetic words for my life, bring them to perfect fulfillment. In this season, by the power of your resurrection, in the mighty name of Jesus, all that you have said concerning my life, all that you have written for me and my family, all that you have written for your church, Father, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and glorify yourself. You are unstoppable. Nobody can stop you. Father, do it for us. All that you have written, the enemy cannot stop it. Do it for us in Jesus' house for all nations. Do it for me. Do it for my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Please be seated. We're going to pray. And I have said, Lazarus means God has helped. In John eleven forty three, 43, when Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come forth. What he was actually saying was, Lazarus, receive my help. Receive my help. And Lazarus received the help of God, spoken by the word of God. Immediately, just I said, Lazarus, come forth. The help of God entered into Lazarus and brought him out. Lift up your voice where you are sitting. Concerning situations in your life, concerning the issues that are going on within you, concerning family issues, concerning spiritual issues, concerning financial issues, concerning anything that has to do with your education, with your project, and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I receive your help right now. Begin to receive the help of God. Begin to receive the help of God. When he said, Lazarus, come forth, he said, Lazarus, receive my help. Begin to receive the help of God. Concerning that which you have tabled before God, receive the help of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I receive your help. I receive your help now. I receive your help by your word. As I am hearing your voice, your help is entering into my life. Your help is entering into my home. Your help is entering into my marriage. Your help is entering into my body. Begin to pray. Begin to receive the help of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you don't mind, I will just encourage you to stand up again and pray the next two prayers. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the Bible says, But if the spirit of him that raised up just from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken also your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. In John 12, 1, as touching Lazarus, the Bible recorded that John 12, 1, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And I put the following notes there. I said, had been sick, but raised from sickness into health. Had been poor, but raised from poverty to riches. Had been sorrowful, but raised from sorrow to joy. Had been a failure, but raised from failure to success. Now, there, the, there is something like a flip. There is a transition. There is a movement from a particular state to another state in a twinkling of an eye. The moment Lazarus received the help of God, there was a change in status. It was as if he moved from one level to another level. Um was dead, but he raised from the dead. You can be raised right now in a twinkling of an eye. There can be a transformation and a change. Lift up your voice and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let my life change now. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Lepra sotonde limakalia. Raiba satonde limakashanda. Let my status change. Let there be a raising from where I am presently into the next level. Raise me up from death to life. Raise me up from poverty to riches. Raise me up from sickness to health. Raise me up from failure to success. Begin to pray. Your family is being raised up now. Jesus, out for all nations. The God that can do what man cannot do is raising us up now. Our bank accounts are being raised up. Things are changing, are transforming from negative to positive. In the name of Jesus, by the power of his resurrection, 
The God that can do what man cannot do. The God that cannot be stopped from doing what he wants to do. The God that can do what men are trying to do that but they cannot do. He's doing it for us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be a reason. Let there be a flipping. Let there be a change. Let there be a change right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power in the word of God. By the help of God. Receive a change. Receive a change. Receive a change now in Jesus mighty name we have prayed please let's be seated and we're going to pray Lazarus was actually stolen John 10 10a the thief commit not but to steal the number one ministry of Satan is to steal it takes things away that's why you see beautiful couples lovely couples and all of a sudden Satan will enter into the marriage into the family and steal the joy that they had maybe at the beginning that is why you will see a church that is doing so well and Satan will come in and steal something critical something crucial and take it away that is why you will see a business that might have been doing very well before and Satan comes in and steals something that is why you see a man that has been healthy before a woman has been healthy, and Satan comes in and steals. So you must not forget that the number one strategy and ministry of Satan is that he steals things. And Jesus Christ is a restorer. One of his, the ability of God as the one that can do what man cannot do is to restore what was stolen. Where you are sitting, close your eyes now. You know where things have been stolen from your life. You know where the enemies came in and the enemy took something away. You know when the anointing left. You are aware when the glory departed. You were aware when the virtue slipped away. You were aware when the uh, 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 peace was taken away. Say, Father... Because you can do what man cannot do. I command in the mighty name of Jesus. All the good things that the enemy stole from my family, I command in the name of Jesus. Return them now. Return them now. Begin to pray. Let your peace return. Let your glory return. Let your virtue return. Let your anointing return. Let your money return. Let your opportunities return. Let the glory return. In the mighty name of Jesus, let what was stolen be restored. In the name of Jesus, anything stolen from your family, get them back. Get them back. Take them back. Get them back right now. Right now. Right now. All stolen goods. All stolen commodities. All stolen virtues. All stolen glories return now in, back into our lives, back into our lives in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has stolen, we are getting them back in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. We're going to pray. And I will advise you, if possible, to stand up to pray this prayer. In John chapter 11, 39, the God that can do all things was the only one that can command and say, Take ye away the stone. Take ye away the stone. There are stones. Many people will have gotten there. Many people will have broken through. Many people will have gotten to their glorious destination. But there is an invisible, massive stone that is blocking them. Unless we all pray collectively and we command the stones to be taken away, things may not really go the way we are expecting. We need to pray. We're going to command and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, all heavy stones blocking my breakthrough and my way to progress, I command scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. Every stone placed before me and my family and my progress and my breakthrough and my destiny scatter now by fire 
in the name of Jesus. Be rolled away. 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 Every stone blocking our progress. Be rolled away. Every stone blocking our breakthrough. Be rolled away. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. We're going to quickly pray. I have a few minutes left. And don't forget, first timers, immediately after we're done, we decide we're going to go into that room there to be welcomed properly by our welcoming team. You just go straight to that door. We want to come out of any type of prison. Because I noticed there that when just right said Lazarus come forth, he was actually saying, come out of prison tomb. Come out of prison tomb. And I saw a pattern that the enemy is an expert in putting people in prison. In Acts chapter 16, which you know very well, verse 26, Paul and Silas, they were put in prison, but they prayed. If they had not prayed, they would have died in prison. In Acts 12, 5 and 10, Peter was in prison, but in verse 5, the church prayed, the saints, everybody, they were doing collective joint prayer session, as we're doing now. And in verse 10 of Acts 12, the gates of the prison of Peter opened on his own accord. Nobody applied any key. The gate opened. We need to come out of prison. Isaiah 61, verse 1, anointing opens the prison door. And every one of us must walk out of that prison. Lift up your voice to pray. And say, Father, Father the prison, the prison. where the strong man of my life logged me and my family. Prison door, open now. In the name of Jesus. And we begin to walk out. We are walking out of prison. We are walking out of prison. Every prison tomb that the enemy placed us, the God that can do all things is opening the prison door now for every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are walking out. We are walking out. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The last prayer point, my time is up. I noticed that Jesus Christ was mocked. Why did mockery come into it? In Matthew 27, 30, Matthew 27, 30, Jesus Christ was mocked, ridiculed, harassed. So many things happened to him. And he died with the shame and the ridiculed. And when he resurrected, he resurrected gloriously. He died with your shame. He died with your ridicules. But the enemy will always want to bring something that is like an apparent shame, an apparent ridicule, like a virtual, not real. It's not actually real. People may be confused. They may think that those things are real. They are not real. But by prayers, you have to make them dissipate completely. It is like the snow that fell in Saskatoon some days ago. Uh, the city and everybody didn't even do anything to clear it away. You know why? They knew it was not going to last because of the increased temperature. So it melted. It couldn't enter into the ground. Those shame and ridicules that are in your life now, they are not real. They are apparent. They are virtual. They are not existing. Lift up your voice and say, Father, by the power of your resurrection, by your ability, to do what man cannot do. Every shame, every ridicule, every harassment in 